I was writing it down Venice today, and my wife says, you know what? You look like an old man that stole some little kid's bike. Ooh. So that kind of hurt, you know? And <laughs> and then just everything, you know, was putting things, because it's just like, it's got those little rims, and it's like, oh, got big crushed velour burgundy seat. It's a lowrider. It's a lowrider bicycle. It's the baddest thing in the world. But I'm right, and she's like, you look like an old man that stole somebody's bike, and all this, and I'm just, I'm going to try to just be a kindler, gentler Ricky today. And right. maybe I have been a little. So and somebody you, mentioned, you know, that, that, that poor guy that called the other night because his... I can also try to slow down my potty mouth. That poor guy called whose who's penis was extremely large. And, and, and that girl that, that, that was at the in-store said, you know, I was a little harsh on him. You harsh? Yes. Imagine because, that. Because, you know, I was a little, not jealous, but... So basically, yeah. having been just I'm slammed by your wife oh, made yes. you more empathic towards our I'm listeners. I'm going to be kindler and gentler I'm going to have to thank Cheryl. Can we call her up? We no, thanks. don't. Jeez. No, don't, Drew. So the number is 1-800-520-1067. And I'm, we want to hear your problems about love and relationships and other things. And, and I'll listen today and be polite. We'll see how long it lasts. You like it? And just like, <laughs> yeah, right. About seven minutes after. Okay. Also, some of you nice call. I'm trying to, you know what I'm thinking right now? I'm thinking... Think Marilyn Kagan, Marilyn Kagan. <laughs> so how can I be more Marilyn Kagan? I can I give me like a big chocolate cake and about four Coca Colas, and then I'll say, oh, be, I'm glad you're much kinder oh, 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 and gentler. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Uh, that wasn't meant. I'm back in the place now. I'm trying to be nice, like Marilyn Kagan would be nice. Okay, Just I feel better now. How, makes, how things make our listeners feel? Exactly. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? So What's the number is 1-800-520-1067. We want to see how you're feeling. Wait, did you hear that? No. Oh. <laughs> Good. Be glad. <laughs> so basically, uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna be so repressed, <clears throat> trying to be nice to our callers, you're just gonna abuse the hell out of those of us here in it's the studio. It's not an act. It's it's the new me. I'm yeah, feeling a little bit different. Act, but it's gonna come out somewhere else. The number else. is one 1067 Some of you kind people have been sending in Love Line theme songs. Mm -hmm. We're gonna play one tonight, and it's great. And this is also one of the ones, we're going to give you the address, of course, we want you to send in your Loveline theme songs, and this is one that we really like. This is, oh no, this isn't the one I was going to play. Where's the other one that I thought you were going to give me? The short one. Oh, I'll just play this for a little bit. It's 106.7 Cairo QFM, Pasadena, Los Angeles, the world famous K-Rock. It goes a lot longer than that, but isn't that a good one, Drew? Mm. That was done by Chaba. Not to be confused with Shaba. So the number's 1-800-520-1067. And right now, let's start off with line number one, John, who is 17. Yes, hi hello. Hi, John. Hello, I'm, hello, hello, Ricky. Hello, Dr. Drew. And John. Yes. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling quite wonderful. I'm glad. And you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you, John. That's and, very and, nice and Ricky, of you to say. Are you going to keep going with this kinder, gentler thing until we like have to hey, beg you to Hey, one call, stop? one call, and already you said I'm doing a great job. I'm okay. feeling better. Mm -hmm. What's up, John? All right, now I've got a problem for Doctor Drew. Mm -hmm. I, I like I was making love to my to my girlfriend like a, a day ago, and now I think she's got like some kind of disease or something because when I when I come now, it, it like smells like really bad. And, and what does that make you? Can I ask you a question, John? Yes, you may. What position are you in where you, you find yourself available to sniff your own excretions? Well, it's because, like, you know, like, when I was in the shower with my girlfriend, like, I came today because we, like, like to do things in the shower. And who doesn't, John? Who doesn't? Yeah. But where did you expel your fluid of love? Where was it? Was it on her, some part on her body? Yeah. And then you put your in nose there? Face. What? In her face. <laughs> oh, that's good, John. That's good. Mm hmm And then did you kiss her? Well, not really, no. Well, then why did you, did you, you put it in her, we'll just call you Mr. Romance. <laughs> so after that, Mr. Romance, after you expelled your fluids of love into her face, you then smelled it, right? Well, yeah, you could smell it. And I, no, you, you, yes, you, you can now smell it. Now, why is it that, <laughs> that you believe that implies that she has an infection? Because, like, <laughs> I haven't been with a girl before her for, uh, for like, a few months. 
I see. Well, you probably have an infection. I think that's a good bet. Uh, and, well, I think she's been around. Well, and if she needs to be treated, she should be seen also. Uh, the, the, really, the only thing of consequence that can cause that sort of thing would be infection. And you guys should get checked out. What can you say? It could be almost anything. So do you think it's... And also, like, my my area between my buttocks and my penis is, like, itchy. My That would be called your taint, John. Mm-hmm. Your taint. My testicular area. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, again, if, if there's a rash there, somebody needs to look at it. Just right. scratch it. There's nothing There's nothing characteristic about the smell you're describing. Okay, so I don't think you have to... I, I can't tell you specifically what you're dealing with, if anything, but it, you need to be evaluated. You need to be checked out. So get both of you off to a doctor. For God's sakes, for her, it could mean something really serious. I mean, it can, she can end up with pelvic inflammatory disease, abscesses, infertility, things like that. I find it kind of interesting how that caller says that he put it on her face and his stinks, therefore she must have a disease. Yeah, well, that's kind of what I found to be quite interesting in that call. <laughs> right now, let's go to Michelle 20 from Valencia. Michelle is on line six. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Yeah, I'm there. How are you? I'm good. We're picking up a little bit of distortion on yeah, your telephone. Yeah. One second. Can you hang on one second? Okay, I'm there. I'm on a cordless. Let me run. To well, thank you, because it's now much worse. Let me run up to the, to the upstairs. The base. Okay. That's much better. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Am I on? You're on. Okay, here's the deal. A coworker of mine who I consider my friend, um, she's been telling me a lot about her life, you know, lately, and she told me she's into bondage. Now, I want to be her friend, but the thing is, I don't want to get sucked into it. Now, how is this deviant or is this common behavior or what? I like how you use that <laughs> word, sucked into it. I, I think uh, it's probably, probably both. It, it's definitely deviant because it's not. It's not. But it. But it is also fairly common. It is. Yeah. And, can and it be depends how far people are into it. I mean. It well, have you heard of the story of O? Mm-hmm. She was telling me she was going to go to a place in San Francisco where they had that kind of scene in whips and chains, and I was kind of getting worried. <laughs> well. I don't want to. You know, I don't want to get involved in this, but I want to be her friend. So. You know, what do I say? You know, how do I react? Well, I, I'm not trying to understand. Is, is it just that you're blown away that this is her sort of orientation? Um, there, there's a whole culture built around this in, in Los Angeles right, right now. I've been what, what, is she, what is she saying to you, Michelle? Um, we were on AOL, and she was like, now, I'm like, what area do you want to check out? She's like, I want to get into bondage. What, was she there with you? Well, uh, we were over the phone, and I was, like, hooking her up to AOL. And, you know, she was re actually, she actually gave out her number to a guy who was a master. And but this could be just like fantasy, right? Uh, I don't think so, because another guy, were, you know, who I work with, he said that she's really into it. Like, what kind of stuff is she into? I know she's into the whips and chains. <laughs> and, you know, I try and think it's funny. You know, I started laughing, and she's like, don't laugh. I'm sure it's not funny to her. No, um, it's not funny to her. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, I can't tell you that because she is into that kind of lifestyle that there's necessarily something wrong with her. I mean, there's a probability there that there's something going on, but you're not, you know, I, I would need a lot more information. Why is it uh, your concern, Michelle? Well, it's my concern is she's been talking to me. There are a lot more things going on where I work. <laughs> it's kind of like Geraldo. What kind of a place do you work at? Um, I can't say. Magic what, Mountain? What, no. what kind oh. of a place is it? Um, I can't even say. I just say that because you live well, in Valencia. Okay, all right, if I tell you, oh well. Where? It's radio. <laughs> you work at a radio station? Okay, well then the, the probability of pathology goes up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I know that. But um, it's not L.A., so you won't figure it out. Valencia. Anyway. Okay, so I, you know, I want to be your friend, but I don't want to get involved in this, and she wants to go out to lunch with me, and I think she's been hitting on me, so I think she might even be like bisexual, but that's not a problem. I don't care. You know, that's her business. Mm -hmm. Never. Well, why, why, why is it that the bondage thing bothers you so much? Because I was checking out some stuff on AOL, and those people are into, like, rape and torture and... The, no, that's... AOL yeah. thing... And s and You gotta understand, AOL right. is complete fantasy. You can do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. Hey, if some of you guys, for all you know, every time you're talking to to the sexy 19-year-old girl, it could be me. Okay? Yeah, but she just... Let that you scare you, you, you okay? You keep bringing that example up, Ricky. You trying to tell us something? What? Yeah, I sign up. You know what? Let me tell you something. I don't do the sex thing on AOL. I never, ever do that. I don't get it. I mean, I just don't get it. So should I keep my distance from her? I no, if she's We're your not friend, saying that. I mean, if there, what, what else is there about her that might be frightening you from maintaining a friendship with her? There's a lot more. What? She was 
having affairs with people at the office, which is nothing new. I'm sure you know it goes on everywhere, but you know, I, especially I, radio, yeah, definitely. And I, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get involved. You know, I don't want to be taken in one day. I mean, she wants me to go out with her, go go party with her, and I don't want to wind up one day, you know, and have some master guy trying to whip me with a chain. You know? it, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. I mean, it, that, that, I mean, it, you you have a possibility of getting involved with somebody who's into that just dating routinely, right? And not being a friend with somebody who's into that kind of thing is necessarily going to force you into something. It's not a, it's not. I mean, unless they are really, really crazy, sick cult of some kind. How can I find that out? I mean, how do I know that she's not? I, into look, I, I think what you should do is is gain her trust, or you you f- try to feel more comfortable with her by spending a little more time with her. Keep your distance. Keep your boundaries well defined. Keep somewhat of a distance from her. Okay. But I don't. I don't think you have to worry about somebody you see socially, casually, that somehow. It, there's a probability that she's a criminal. Yeah. Okay. I mean, your I mean, fantasy is that somehow she's a criminal, and, that, and that's not what this implies. She may be a little cuckoo. I mean, she may have a personality disorder, which is sort of what you're describing. Somebody that maintains these terribly chaotic, intense relationships, and is, you know, there may be in and out of substances, and uh, has it maybe a history of abuse in her background, that sort of thing. People like that can be kind of fun to be around. They can be if you get close to her. No, they can. They can be. Hey, you know what? You know what? But 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 but, but somebody like that also, if you get actually close to them, can really demand a lot of you and can be very very dangerous, treacherous place to be. So so that's how I'd I'd ask you to be careful with that. And and I've worked at K Rock for two years now, and I mean, you know, most of our bosses, the people that are in charge of us, are complete sadomasochists, and and you know, wear a lot of leather clothes when they're away from work, and and we're still able to carry on friendships and decent relationships with these people. Thank you for your call, Michelle. Uh, do we have time for another one before commercial? Sure we do. And I'll also be getting to some of your email. Let's go to Kelly from Cerritos. Hi, Kelly. Hello. How are you? Why? What's going on? I just like... I'm asking that because I care. Well, like, I disagree on a caller that called the other day. What day? Yesterday. I wasn't here. It doesn't matter. I mean, uh-huh. what was it? What was the call about? Uh, Listen to me, K Rock, and how people make fun of her. Who? Oh, that call was when I was here. I thought about who making fun of her because she like she listens to K Rock and um, how she's like um, a s- called a sellout in her. Oh, oh no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, we, we get got this, this last, all the time. Well, we got this one really clearly last night when, when a girl we and we started discussing, in fact, the, how ridiculous it is for people to choose their community and you know, what radio they listen to based on racial or cultural boundaries. I I would hope that people would come to at least a show like this with all diverse kinds of, of cultural and racial backgrounds and be, feel free to participate and change the environment here if they if they want to be a part of it. If somehow it doesn't respond to what, you know, their needs are, come come in here and participate. Or and, get and, new friends. And yeah, right. And and to to be have to be ostracized or 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 criticized. But like roundly for the and, and what are her to options to listen to? Um, you know, because she said she was whatever. I don't know because she said I don't know what she was. I forgot what she. Well, said. we didn't ask that, and we didn't wait. What are she, you, Kelly? Me? Yeah, what Mexican? Na- okay. We we didn't ask her for details about that kind of thing. We just c- were commenting on how ridiculous it, it is that people kind of get yeah, that. Yeah, but you, she was like, um, she was telling how people call her sellout or whatever. Right. And I think she deserves it because she should start listening to her her own cultural music if she doesn't want nobody calling her. And she said that K-Rock's number one, you know, I have a favorite station too, you know, and it's like my own nationality. Thing. So Kelly, Kelly, what, what nas- do you listen to when you're usually at home? Do you listen to Aztec music? Do you <laughs> no, listen to, do you listen to the original music from the Mayans? <laughs> no, I listen to what my parents listen to. And so, like, so what would be, what would, thing. what would be your music? Would your be music be Aztec folklorico music or Kid Frost? No, it's like my own culture, and she's just like, she said that K-Rock's number one, and, you know, she's complaining about being a sellout when, you know, she is, you know, she definitely is. Hey, Kelly, Kelly. And that's crap. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, uh, to explain to me. Shh. Calm down, <laughs> I thought Ricky. you need that music for this call. Calm down, Well, Ricky. you calm down. Let me, I'm just quite curious about this, because I, because I, w- you're welcome here, Kelly. Mm-hmm. You understand that? Yeah. And, and why is that selling out to participate with your peers? And, and multiple different cultural or, or orientations getting together and sharing ideas. Why is that selling out? I, I, you can, you can, I'm sure she still enjoys her, her heritage and her music and things, but right now she's just into this particular kind of music. Why should that be criticized? And, and I want to understand this. I really do. Because if, if I can understand it better, maybe I can deal with it. No, because she's like a whining, 
Okay. But maybe why is it, why is that a sellout? Why is that what you call her a sellout? And she must mean something. I'm when having you say a that. hard time being nice, Ricky, and I'm just I'm I'm right now. Hold on one second, Kelly. Yeah. I'm deciding: do I be nice, Ricky, or do you finally lose or it? Do I just be quiet? So I'm being quiet. Good. So just so you know, most of the listeners that are wondering why I'm not going off, that want to go off right <laughs> now, I'm with you. But you know what? I'm not. A, I'm not about that right now, Kelly. Tonight's. I'm good, not you, about you that, Kelly. A good night, but, Kelly but, but you're pushing me. Help me. Help me understand it, though. We, we only got a minute here, so please. Help well, me yeah, out. I think that BJ or PJ, whatever DJ, whatever. Last night. No, no. Talk about you. What you said. Last you, night. Okay. No, no. You, Kelly, you said she is a sellout. No, what does that mean? Yeah, to you? she's a sellout because. Okay, she's saying, okay, she was, okay. she said her race or something on the phone. And, like, she's saying that she doesn't appreciate it because people are calling her white, okay? She should just stick to her music. That way nobody can say nothing to her, and she don't have to whine about it, you know? Kelly, Kelly. And are you not making me Whether you know this? it or not, you are speaking. And I speaking. think Kelly is so fake because Kelly. they have these callers that say something about masturbation, and it's just, like, not Kelly, sense. Kelly. Boy, you, you, you're really trying to push my buttons, but listen to me, <laughs> Kelly, okay? Because I have, first of all, you speak... F- sounding like one of the most complete racists I've ever heard in my life, telling that certain people should stay with their own certain music, okay? And let me tell you another thing, because because there's something beautiful about this country, Kelly, okay? Kelly? Yeah? If you don't like this station, change the friggin' station. You've spent enough time trying to call through. You don't like K-Rock, Kelly? There's plenty of radio stations, okay? No, but... Like, no, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. It's a sub- Obviously, it's a sub- Kelly, Kelly, why are you listening? No, it's because just, you know what? Because you know what? Because she had to no, say Kelly, something. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Obviously, if this is such a you were listening, that's the only way that you heard her. Okay. I so, was, I, shh, Kelly, I'm going to be nice. Okay, okay? okay. The beauty about right. this thing, if there's something you don't like, don't listen to it. Okay, Kelly. Keep, keep if there's something, no, 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 Kelly. If there's something, this. it's not. If there's something you don't like, <laughs> don't listen to it. You don't like the radio station, don't listen to it. For instance, this call, I don't like it. Love Line will be right back after this brief series of messages on the world famous K Rock. Hi guys, we're going on a national bikini tour, and we're looking for two oil boys who can grease us up before each competition. Now back to Ricky Rackman and Dr. Drew. This is Love Line on the world famous K Rock. Ricky, you can start talking. Anytime now. I'm doing okay, right? Still being nice? Still being nice, Scott? Yes. You know that last time when I called you bonehead? That, I didn't mean that. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I not, love you for that. It's not like I, I'm... Let's go to some calls, shall we? Let's go to the, the city of North Hollywood, and we'll talk to Soraya, who is online too. <laughs> how, do I, how do you pronounce your name? Soraya. Hello, Soraya. What's up? What can we do for you? What can we do for you? You're on the air. I wanted to comment on the girl that just called. Kelly? Oh, I hope Lovely this. Kelly. Yes. Ricky, get yeah, your heart I mean, music she's on. such an airhead. What is she thinking? What is I she? What's what correct me if I'm wrong. Ricky? Correct me. What was that? Why'd you keep your mouth? You just because I'm trying. Hey, K- Soraya? Surai- uh-huh. It's a new kindler and gentler Ricky. And every time I try to get upset because, you know, some people are saying I've been a little bit harsh and, you know, I mean, I always had a little bit of a uh, few parents complain. I mean, it, I used to think it wasn't Love Line unless we had a dozen complaining parents every week. But That's right. Don't worry. This will last about a little bit more. 25 minutes. But w- am I wrong in saying that, that, that what she was saying was the most racist thing I've ever heard? She was totally contradicting herself. She, she did not make sense at all. Can you shed any light on people who are like that? I mean, can you make I me mean, understand? I will consider sellout somebody who was ashamed of their own race, you know? Right. But, I mean... I listen to Spanish music. I listen to English music. I listen to. You I mean, to me, to me, Kelly was suggesting that if you liked Verdi operas, you were selling out on uh, your Mexican yeah, heritage. That could be true. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, just if you enjoy other kinds of music and cultural events other than your your heritage, mm-hmm. uh, you're somehow selling out. That's that's a shame. That's a sad thing. I mean, people don't shouldn't be that way. I know she's. Uh, <laughs> I would just like to smack her, but you know. We'll try to set that up for you, okay? <laughs> Thank right. you for your call. Let's go to line four. Is it is it pronounced Jesus? Uh, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. 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 I was saying, oh, Jesus from South Central is on the line. Jesus, what's up? Hey, Jesus. Well, I just wanted to comment on the last caller, Kelly. Yes. Yeah. Well, I want to say that she's a real bitch, you know, because, you know, it's stupid to say that someone that listens to some type of music is a sellout because I'm Salvadoreño, you know, Yeah. and I listen to K-Rock all the time, you know, and... 
you know, just because I listen to it doesn't mean I, I'm a sellout. I still listen to the same type of music I listen to right now. You right. Know, with, like my mom's. And sure. My I mean, diversity is what's interesting. Right. I mean, that's what makes it. It makes us. I strong. listen to everything. Almost. Yeah, I do too. I almost. do too, actually. No, I, I probably listen to a broader range of music than you do, I bet. Well, obviously, when you throw that Via Verde stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> Opera. Well, thanks for your call, Jesus. Uh, Ricky? Yes, sir. I like it better when you're mean, man. <laughs> you know what? If we... If we mean to that last caller, man. <laughs> Jesus, if we get a few more Kellys calling, it might come back, but I'm just I'm trying to relax. Back. Thank you for your call, bro. All right. Thank you, man. Okay. Let's go to Tammy from La Puente. Hello, Tammy. Tammy? Tammy. Oh, there she is. Nope, there she is. Let's go to Sherry. She's calling from Whittier. Hi, Sherry. Hello, it's Sheree, actually. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> I have a question for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm five months pregnant. Okay. And um, my boyfriend, I think, is doing speed again. Beautiful. And I need to know how to confront him. Um, because mm. I don't have the the hard evidence. I caught him once before, a couple of months ago, and he said that it was just a relapse that he was having. And a, a relapse based on a relapse from what? Was he going to meetings and working with a sponsor and really dealing with his addiction, or was he just white knuckling and avoiding the use of speed for a period of time? Well, at when he first quit doing speed, he was going to meetings uh-huh. and stuff, but by the time that I had met him, he wasn't he was no longer going to meetings or anything. Mm. Sheree, are you guys going to get married? No. Are you going to maintain a relationship with him? Well, if if he's doing speed, I don't want to because Then then that's what you should confront him with. Just let him know that uh, you've noticed some changes. Uh-huh. And if if it turns out that speed is back in his life, you are not going to be a part of his life. That will have to be speed or you. And I would suggest you focus really on taking care of your life, and my yourself, baby. protect your baby, go to some Al-Anon meetings. Huh? Okay. Work your own program, and it will make it easier to deal with him. Very often, I've noticed that when the significant other of someone who is using gets better themselves, that is to say they really begin working on their codependency, mm-hmm. uh, it really forces the issue in a rather dramatic way, and sometimes the addict will get better. They, they will do what they need to do to get better anyway. Right. But by your, you know, nagging and pushing and controlling and all that kind of stuff, that makes things worse. Right, because I'm afraid that when I when I go to confront him that he he's going to have an excuse for well, th- everything. Well, then don't, then don't make, fall d- for it. well, don't make any kind of ultimatum. I don't even think you should, I think you should just let him know that, put him on alert, that okay. you've noticed some changes and uh, you think, uh, you know, you're thinking that the speed's back in. You just want to let him know that. If it turns out that you're, he's on speed again, you're you're done. You're done. you're finished, and you're going to start going to some Al-Anon meetings, and then let him do what he does. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. I've noticed something in this. How long has it been? Because it seems like 30 hours. Thirty minutes precisely. Thirty minutes of you know the new kindler, gentler Ricky trying to be kind of a nice guy instead of that word that everybody's kind of calling you know forever. what it seemed like. An but I've noticed to me too. one thing. I've noticed one thing, and what does this tell me? With me trying to be nice, I haven't said a word the whole show. What does that say? <laughs> So when I talked all the time, I was being mean? Or no. that, well, I don't know. Where's Tank? <laughs> exactly. Let's go to Shane. He's calling from Burbank. Shane, you're on Loveline. Hi, Shane. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, how was your summer so far, Shane? Been pretty cool. Been what, chilling. What's going on? Um, I called you guys about three weeks ago, and I was the one that wanted to go to prom with that one girl. But I couldn't because I had hours of detention. Yes. Remember, this was the guy that, that school. You guys remember that? Right. And what was the advice we gave you? We, he told me to just keep going after. Right. You'd already not gone. What's that? You'd already had not gone when you called us. Yeah, no. You'd already missed it. It's all right. When I called you, the prom was done and over yeah. with, and we yeah. didn't go. All right. But anyways, I kept on pursuing her, and now I'm going out with her. So the that. advice was good. The, the advice was good, and I was just calling to let you guys know. So the harsh, nasty Ricky gave some good advice. Yeah. All Ooh. right, thanks for your call. Hey, okay, wait, hold on. Yeah. I'm another person that's commenting on the Kelly chick. All right. I think that there's no such thing as a sellout. You know, it all depends on what your taste is, you know, and it doesn't matter what you're born. All these people are talking about prejudice, you know, and all this and how we should end it. So in other words, just, just, call, just being aware... 
to, to have the kind of racial awareness that that results in somebody even being considered a sellout is racist. Yeah. Okay. If if anything, it would be the whole opposite because the whole idea of expressing your individuality and doing whatever you believe in right. is doing whatever you believe in. If what you believe in is doing this, doing A, then you're just going for what your gut tells you to go for. It's not, you know, uh, whatever. Thanks, Shane. But I agree. Thanks for your call, Shane. Let's go to uh, Jerry, who is 17 from Bell Gardens. Yeah, hello. Hi, Hi Jerry. Jerry. Hey, man. I want to comment on the one chick, Kelly, that just called. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I really think that she's, like, really ignorant for saying that, you know, because I don't consider nobody a sellout. If, like, just because you listen to other music, that doesn't make you a sellout. As long as you don't forget, like, where you're coming from. You know what? Maybe it was her and three people that were telling this because, and the nice thing is, you know, I'm trying to be the nice Ricky guy now. And the good thing is that we've had people like Jerry and everybody else just saying all the things that I wanted to say anyway. So now I don't even See? have to say all it. All right. The callers pick up and uh, are harsh for you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think we all are in agreement about Kelly, Jerry. But let's take one more call about uh, Yes, and then let's tell the screeners no more calls about her. <laughs> everybody doesn't like her. <laughs> so she should just go to say Actually, no, you know what? I'd like to hear a call from somebody who agrees with Kelly. Really, I'd like to hear what, what that point of view is. Get Yeah, get the music out. I don't want to hear anything more about it, Drew. <laughs> I'm One kind more of, call. I've had my fill on the whole subject, Drew. have got Kathy on the air right now. Kathy, okay, Kathy. 26 from Studio City. Hello? Hi, Kathy. I just wanted to say one thing. I know it's like getting tired at this point. But? Yes. But I just wanted to add to what Ricky said. Okay. Um, he said that if she didn't like the music, if she change the channel. Station, she could change the station. Thankfully, she lives in a free country where the government isn't controlling what's going out in the air. Right. Too much. So then I agree that if I would say... That if she wants to ostracize people for what they do, she should not live in America anymore. Like, she should leave the country if she doesn't like that, you know? Because that's what America is all about. We let people do whatever they want, and we don't impose our feelings on anyone else. So if she doesn't like it, she should leave. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. you got to reset all those things, Ricky. I know. I'm, having a, I'm trying to be nice, but none of these carts are working for me right now. Your fault. They're not my fault. Maybe it is my fault, Scott Bonad. You're right. Let's go to Rob, who's on line six from Ukaipa. Hi, Rob. Hello. You know, R Ricky, uh, Scott made an astute comment last night. He thinks that people now are just, from wherever they're calling from, they don't want to admit where they're calling from, just say they're calling from Ukaipa. Or La Puente. Or La Puente. No, I'm really from Ukaipa. I'm sorry. Oh, That's what they all say. <laughs> no, actually, the people from Ukaipa lie and say they're from somewhere else. <laughs> What's up, Rob? Well, my girlfriend, Tana, called in a couple of weeks ago, actually it was like a month ago, and um, she said that her entire family hated me. Do you remember that? You were making fun of her because she said that she twirled. She what? She, what? she was a baton twirler. Oh, baton twirlers. Good remember catches, that? those huh? baton twirlers. Yeah, well... Um, so are the girls that carry the big flags at the starting of the parade, <laughs> except they have a second navel. Yeah. What? Go ahead, Rob. Well, anyway... Um, she said that her family hated me. Right. And um, her little brother, I don't know if I should use his name. Don't. don't. What's up? Well, her little brother and his um, portly friend, they uh, cut my cable on my bike. Mm -hmm. And I was going down a hill. Like, I crashed and everything. Mm. And it's just, they've been giving me a lot of um, a lot of problems. And I don't know what I should do. Because I don't know how to prove that, you know, I should be going out with. Why do they dislike you so much? I don't know. Brothers are sometimes protective of sisters. Yeah, you know, like, she's only like 16 and everything. How old are you? Me, I'm 17. W what did she say the reason was that everybody disliked you? I don't remember the call specifically. I don't know. I guess I'm her first boyfriend. So it might be a little strange for him, you know, their daughter going out with me. I really don't know. I guess I'm sort of a jerk sometimes also. But. Maybe you should confront the brothers. Okay. Like, like in a neutral ground, say, hey, what's wrong? You know, I know you guys don't like me, but I really like your sister, you know, and I'm an okay guy. No, that might backfire. Huh? Yeah. How do you know they cut the cables on your bike? What? Well, it's obvious. Why is it obvious? Because I was there that day, and they were really giving me a hard time. And then when I went to go down the hill, it was the handbrake on the steering part. Cut, and cut the, the cable. And the cable was cut. Mm. And I walked back up to their house because I live like four blocks over, and you kind of that's pretty far to use their phone. And they were just sitting there laughing, and I had scrapes all on my arms and everything. So, so people, and people that are that that violent, who knows what they would do if you try to confront them? Yeah, I know. You know, I'm not scared of them or nothing. It's just a little tipsy, but I really, I try to avoid problems if 
if I can. What, what's with the parents? I don't know. They really don't come out and say that they don't like me. What? Did, hmm. But you sort of know when you're not. You know what? I think you ought to just focus on your girlfriend and maybe if if you if you get really a new one. Or get a new one, but if you really like her and care for her properly, if she, if you guys develop a, a sound relationship, maybe she can create the inroads for you to be somehow acknowledged, at least by the parents, and then hopefully the rest of the family will follow. Okay? All right. All right, good luck, Bob. Thanks for your call, Rob. We'll be back with more Loveline shortly. Loveline with Ricky Rackman and Dr. Drew. We'll be right back to say something clever or insightful or something. On the world famous Kyra! Is hi, it? hi, this is Jackie Mason. You're listening to Loveline with Dr. Drew and Ricky Reckman. The Loveline operators are standing by to take your phone calls. Dial 1-800-520-1067. Now back to Loveline with Ricky Reckman and Dr. Drew. You know, we had to put that Jackie Mason one on because all my Jewish brothers have been calling me a sellout and I had to get back in touch with my... 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 Kosher side. What's it called? Your kosher side. Exactly. <laughs> So we've been doing this little thing on Loveline where we've been saying, get yourself a recorder, make a Loveline theme song, send it to us here at K-Rock, good or bad, we will play them. Little did we know that the first couple ones that came in were really good. True, we had one that was not as good as the other ones, but tonight we got one that, what is what is her name, Scott? Not Nate Belly? It's, it's foreign because uh, she doesn't pronounce my name very right. Natel Belle. Natel <laughs> Belle. Remember, this is the kinder, gentler Ricky. So you pick the good day to send in your demo tape because I have nothing mean to say in any time. I just anybody. play my heart, play my harp and my heart at the same time, and I'm just kind of in a peaceful place trying to think. Marilyn Kagan. Now let's now let, there's a brand new one, and I will give my critique at the end of it, and we'll also give the address where you can send in your new Loveline theme song. Okay, this is the new Loveline theme song as recorded by Natel Ballet. Natel <laughs> Ballet. Here it is. Love line, it's love time with Doctor Dre and Ricky Rockman. Love is a reaction, a fascination. Not just an attraction, makes your life function. We've got a little bit. One of six point seven. Oh, famous K Rock. That's it. <laughs> Let's go to some more calls. No, no, shall wait we? a minute. Did that remind you of anybody? Who did it remind you? To me, it was a, a, a between Nina Hagen and Lena Lovich. Nina Hagen. Damn, like that one. Rock man. That, that's, on that's a, you can puke into the can. Hey, 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 hey. She no, no, she just started retching. I'm sorry. Huh? Do you like it, Scott? It's, you remember those Snapple commercials where people were sending stuff in? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, except the Snapple, I think, went through some and that they didn't play. You know what, we'll though? We'll play anyone. And we give us and the address real I like this one. better than Nina Hagen, so there. What? <laughs> and if, if listen, what you got to do is just record a Loveline theme song, throw our names in it, put K-Rock in it if you want. And just send it to us at K-Rock. If you don't have to go into a studio, but it's nice if you do. We will be absolutely no prize whatsoever, but we will play the song. Mm -hmm. And some of the good ones we'll keep, like the ones from White Trash Studios, the one from uh, Chaba. And there was a really good one that but, but Scott, oh, he accidentally played and recorded over it, which is a mistake that, hold on a second. Yeah, anybody could have played and recorded over one of the best tapes we ever got. But they'll send us another one. If you want to write to us here at K-Rock and send us your theme song, what's the address, Anne? Thank you, Ricky. That's P.O. Box uh, excuse me. 10670, Burbank, California, 91510. P.O. Box 10670, Burbank, California, 91510. Let's go to another fax. Oh, I haven't read a fax yet. So this would be a fax as opposed to another fax. About that earlier caller, the lady who was concerned that by hanging out with a co-worker who's into bondage, she'll get dragged into the SM scene. Come on, that's ridiculous. It reminds me of the semi-ancient fear that by hanging out with a gay friend, they'll turn you gay. If this co-worker tries to make you get into S&M, all the caller has to do is say, Hey, I'm not into that. If you are, that's cool. It's just not my thing. Sure, if this co-worker is in fact abusive, then she should worry. But not just because the co-worker is into bondage. To quote the Mad Hatter, don't let's be silly. Hmm. I agree. For the sake of just agreeing. Let's go to uh, Cindy, who is 
32 and calling from Santa Monica. Speaking of the S&M scene. Hello. Um, Hi, Cindy. How are you, Ricky? Good. I must say I have all kinds of new respect for you since you've been kinder and gentler. Do you like it? Yes, I do. Because She, she felt comfortable calling. <laughs> well, well, you know, actually, I, I have all the respect for you because you're not saying everything that I would have said. <laughs> what all those other times? It's, it's self. Re- it, it's it's self restraint. It, it's, it's see, a new. It's a new thing for you. It huh. teaches all of you one thing. <laughs> With me being kinder and gentler, all I was doing when I was dare I say that the honest, true to myself, Ricky, is just saying all the things that you've all wanted to say. That's so. Right. So basically, each and every one of you out there listening to the show has a little bit of prick inside them, and <laughs> and I just let it come out. And now when I don't, you, the listener, want to do it instead. Does that make sense? Well, they're calling in and doing it anyway. Right. right. But it's okay. <laughs> so but Cindy, I'm not going to. Oh. I'm in a different place now, Cindy. What's going on? Well, um, Dr. Drew, I, I think... Um I think you've addressed this problem before, but I, I didn't. I don't remember what you'd said. Uh, I think my boyfriend and I have a size mismatch problem. Uh-huh. Um, we have some. Well, we. I have some pain on penetration uh, uh-huh. when we begin lovemaking, uh-huh. and then afterwards, he's he's a little enthusiastic, uh-huh. which is. Dare I say how large is he? Um, actually, he, he's not. Uh, He's not incredibly long, but he's um, girth. Yes, he's girth. Girthy. He is girthy. Girthy. Yes. I'm looking girthy. for the girthy type. Okay, and what's the deal? <laughs> but I like that. Um, well, after huh, sometimes after sometimes during, I start to notice that um, the perineal area uh-huh. is irritated, uh-huh. and there's also some internal irritation. Uh-huh. Um, when was your last pelvic exam? Oh gosh, just uh, June. And that was okay. Yeah, in fact, I asked my gynecologist about it, and he said that um, that my lubrication seems fine to him, but he suggested that we try that, uh, you know, try a little extra lube. Right, and, spit. And my boyfriend said that helped him, but it didn't help me. Uh, did you guys use a condom or anything like that? No. Oh, God, I'm allergic to rubber. Latex, the latex, <laughs> which happens. It's quite awful. Um, shoot. Uh, I mean, you've had a pelvic exam. There's no... None of the typical kinds of either infection or lubrication problem or can you do the endome- splits endometriosis or something like that. No. Uh, does he is your boyfriend aware that you're having discomfort? Yes. And is he sympathetic to this and, and yes, sort of he is. trying to to behave in such a way that it doesn't make it worse? Yes. Unfortunately, I don't see him very frequently, so mm. I'm <laughs> when I do see him, it's um, it's it's kind of mutual anyway. But you know the the mutuality of of our sexual impulse is followed up by a, a very unhappy morning after. At least unhappy morning after. Do you, do you get urine infections recurrently? Um, no, that hasn't been a problem, but sometimes it's just really painful. How about your urethra? And, and Not a problem, actually. Really. Don't even know where it is. I just wanted to say it. And, uh, just I, wanted I, to say it. I just, I just agree with what the gynecologist said. You need to use lots of lubricant and, and really work on the mechanics. You know, be, be more aware of what you're doing with each other. I mean, Have you, you tried you, different positions? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> like? Oops. Well, do you really want to know? Does it matter? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> yes, we do try different positions. But um, that's not always... It's not really effective. Try different men? With the problem. <laughs> yeah. I've I, tried different men, and with some men it's a problem, and with some men it's not. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, the, the most common reason for someone to get pain with penetration is actually a spasm of the muscles down there, usually caused by anxiety. But you pretty clearly, that's not what you're really describing. So no. I, I don't know what more we can say except to use more lubricant and be very very aware of what you're doing. Try okay. to try to find other other ways to take care of yourself. Hmm. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. Thanks very Bye-bye. much. We have time real quick to go to Mike before the next commercial break. Mike from West LA, you're on Loveline. Hey, Ricky. Hello, Mike. Hey, what's up? I was at that Harley Davidson thing. Did you think that was fun? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I had a blast. Yeah, I was just wondering who won the bikini show. Um, I only did the starting of it and then had Richard Blade, but uh, I was one of the judges, and I believe it was the girl who made her own bathing, bathing suit. It was like, like there were a lot of girls that showed up to that thing with like, you know, huge, big <laughs> store-bought breasts. I'm trying to be nice now. 
that, that, that did it for a living, that thought they were going to go in there and just win the contest, that go and enter the contests. Yeah. But the girl that won was a girl that I don't think has ever entered a contest. She made her own like bathing suit. She rides bikes. She was really cool, and she was and, and they actually asked some like, you know, rather than just go up there and shake it, it was kind of like they actually asked a lot of questions, and and I think that was the girl that won. All right. Okay. All right. Because you were dying to know, right? Yeah. Okay. Now you know, Mike. I knew it wasn't that girl that had her butt and just like the black leather. Huh? I knew the girl with the black leather. She, she did not win. win. I know she didn't win. How come? Because it's nasty. My, I think, Mike, you need to get a harp. All right. Thanks for your call. Hi, Bob. Love Line will be right back on 106.7 K Rock. Now, back to Love Line on K Rock. Call us at 1 800 520 1067. Now, here's Ricky Rackman and Dr. Drew. See that? Drew's head was going back and forth. <laughs> you can't help yourself. Hey, here's a fax. Fax has come to us at 5201FAX. Dear Drew, I think you're awesome. I'll make this fast. What is the scientific name for a fart? Thanks a lot. Your number one listener, Jeff from Beverly Hills. Flatus. Flatus? Or flatulence? Mm-hmm. What's flatulence? Having? Having flatus. Okay. And I have some faxes, uh, some uh, email to read, but I'll read that in a little bit. Let's go to the Ross who is from Long Beach. Hello, Ross. Welcome to Loveline. Yes. Hi, Ross. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm splendid. That's great. The kindler, gentler Ricky, you know. <laughs> Just for tonight. I no. like the meaner Ricky. Well, that's okay. <laughs> What's up? Okay. Now, um, it's this, like anti-K-Rock thing at this church. I mean, they don't mention it in the sermons or anything like that. Too bad. <laughs> but it's in, um, like... The day, the day I get mentioned in a sermon, I'm doing something right. <laughs> I'm doing something really right. But it's like, um, with the teenagers. Like, I heard a story from, um, this guy that when he was, when he was in K-Rock, he was all depressed and everything, and some, like, sad story, you know? And... Then, so he switched, and he listens to Power and Coast now, and he's happier. And um, my friend, she's, she has to, like, find an alternative to K-Rock, because I guess they think K-Rock is um, negative or demonic or something. But now she has to find, like, a, an alternative to K-Rock, because her mom won't listen to K-Rock. Her mom won't let her listen to K-Rock. Like, because of its demonic I, I I guess, I don't know, I guess they think it's negative. Because there are only a few satanic bands that K-Rock plays. I mean... You probably play less satanic bands than they used to. <laughs> but you still gotta, you know, you gotta throw in those white zombies once in oh, a while. Yeah, you know, a little good demonic music never hurt anybody. Yeah, but um, I guess they think it's really negative, and so... What do they think the music does? I really don't know. I really don't know. Because, um, like, we were in the car, and, she, and her mom said something about K-Rock, and then about Christian music. She was mentioning something about K-Rock, and how it was bad or negative. And I said, huh? And my mom, my, my, mom, my friend got mad at me. She nudged me. She gave me a dirty look. Well, it, it, it makes me feel a lot better know that at first I thought all the parents were just really mad at me. But now that the parents are mad at the whole station, that's nice. And maybe we'll be doing a triple shot of striper form in a little bit. Well, maybe bit. they'll start listening to it because you're nice now. We'll see. Thank you for your call. Okay. Right now we're going to go to Carissa, who is calling from... Sur- no, okay, Tatiana instead. Hi. Uh, well, Drew, Ricky, first off... Uh, the kind of gentler, gentler you, it's okay, but that's not really who you are. You're an overall nice guy, so don't try to... I'm older me. now. I'm older. That's not you have a point. birthday? You no, know, I didn't have a birthday. You know, everybody yes. loves you the way you are, so don't try to be something you're not. You know, you're just... Okay, Tatiana, okay. thank you. <laughs> okay, well, basically, here's my little problem. Because you're bringing back the old Ricky every second. <laughs> okay, um, well, basically, my problem is I've never really had a female friend because girls always play mind games with guys. And I just think that totally sucks because, you know, just everything they do, they lie and they backstab you and whatnot. So my whole life, I've had, like, very few female friends. And now I've had, like, I have met, like, this really cool girl. I mean, we've, like, we're just, like, identical, right? Problem is, I'm a really touchy-feely person, and I'm completely heterosexual. But because I've never really had a relationship, a friendship with a girl, I think she might think I'm, like, a lesbian or bi. Well, what kind of touchy-feely things do you do? Okay, like, um... Just stuff like, like I'll you know I'll go over to her house and I'll like come in and say hi and I'll hug her and that's really uncomfortable with her because she's fairly homophobic 
and I'm not. Why do you just not do that? Huh? It's, it's just basically the way I was brought up. Oh, by the way, going back to that uh, ignorant girl I called her, like, I'm Latin, and basically I was brought up in a very, um, just, I guess, lovable home, <laughs> I guess you can say. And we were just taught that whenever you go into someone's house, you know, you, you greet them with a hug. Yeah. And basically it's just something that I was brought up with, and I have, like, basically try to limit myself. Have you told her this? Yeah, I told her that. She says that she's completely, she understands that she knows that I'm not a lesbian. All right, so what's the big deal? Well, now she goes likes to. She likes to go over to the house, you know, once in a while, say hi to the friend, give her a little nipple twist, no, and she's no, like no, that. No, she's wait. not going to suddenly be comfortable with it. She, she is raised in a different environment. Sorry, no, that slipped out. <laughs> well, basically what happens is, like, I've been uh, considering getting breast implants for about six years now, oh, yes. and, like, we'll watch TV and I'll like, oh, yes. are those real or, you know, whatever, and I know that things like that make her uncomfortable. Which, one, I, which are the people on TV that you say that about? Oh, uh, just... The tawdry ones. <laughs> the tawdry ones, yeah, which like, would be my favorite. Like, like the geeks on Baywatch and stuff. And you have to ask yourselves if they're real? Well, you know what I mean. It's like I want, I want. I mean, I'd like to get something that looks fairly natural, not, nothing that's like, you know, like completely, you know, horizontal. Well, if you're going to do it, go horizontal. <laughs> Within limits. So basically, H- I mean, Hold on one second. Excuse me to interrupt, but I have to do this. It's my job. At the top of every hour. I have to say, 106.7 Kara QFM, Pasadena, Los Angeles, the world famous Kara. I'm sorry for interrupting, That's but fine. please go on with your, because I'm completely riveted to your story. <laughs> well, basically, I just need to, I mean, she says that she's comfortable, just the fact that I'm a fairly touchy person, but I noticed that, like, lately, like, she'll sit in the back seat of the car, and, like, whenever I sleep over, she'll, like, make sure to, like, sleep, like, on the other side of, you know, like, the room and things like that. And it's like, I don't know if I did something. I asked her. She said that I didn't. And that Some of this may be mm-hmm. symbolic of really the, the, her discomfort with the intimacy that you guys are developing. I and mean, people can't always tolerate the same level of closeness. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're obviously somebody that needs and seeks a, a tremendous amount of closeness in their relationships. The she may not be able to tolerate it in the same way. She may, that may not be a comfortable place for her to be in her friendship. You've got to be sensitive to that, okay? You're not the only person. She cannot handle affection from anyone. Yeah, that's well, but that's her, and you've got, you've got to respect that in her. I mean, if, you, if that doesn't, you know, trying to make her give you the kind of affection back or, or, or create the closeness that you need to be in a relationship, she may not be the best, best friend for you. She may not be able to deliver what your needs are in a friendship. On the other hand, if you can just accept her as she is and learn to deal with that and be sensitive to where her boundaries lie, You'll be all right, okay? Basically, I tried to do that, but like, uh, I, I know that you guys are running short on time, and I can't take up this whole time, but um, basically, I, I'll, 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 I understand all of that, and I do that, but then sometimes, like, um, something will happen, and it's like, you know, like something, like if we're playing a game, and it's like we won or whatever, um, and then, you know, I'll, like, start jumping up and down with her, and then I'll notice that she'll, like, shy away, because she can't that, handle it. That's her. She can't handle it. That's correct. Okay. Ricky, don't be weird. That wasn't me. See, I'm talking. I'm snoring. It's not me. I'm talking. Right, right, right. I'm snoring. How does he one, do it? Talking, comment. snoring. Yes, talking, snoring. One super fast comment, Ricky. Um, that girl that called earlier, Kelly. Um, basically, she needs to get an education to try to have an intelligent conversation because she's complete. She's just completely ignorant. So, just basically, that's it. Thanks for your comments. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Tatiana. Let's go to Carissa from Hel- Hemet. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Clarissa. Hi. Hello. Go ahead. Hi. I just want to make a comment first before I say my question. I'm really proud of Ricky for having seven years because I'm in NA and it's really hard to get that long of time. Mm-hmm. How long have you been clean? Two months. Mm. I've messed up a lot. I've been in, in and out since I was 16. Mm. So, but anyways, I'm calling about my this guy that I'm. Can I just tell you one just one little tip? Yeah. And if anybody listens to the show. Anybody knows that I am not a program preacher, okay? Even though I believe in it, I think it's something that helped get me clean, but I'm not one of those people that thump AANA and say, duh, duh, duh. I'll just tell you one little thing, okay? Mm-hmm. If you ever feel like getting loaded, say, okay, let me just wait till tomorrow morning, wait till tomorrow morning. I have never, w- ever once in my entire life woke up in the morning saying, I wish I got high last night. Okay, does that make any sense? Yeah. I have never woken up saying, I wish I... You'll wake up a lot of mornings saying, I wish I didn't get loaded last night, but I don't ever... And I mean, I've had some times where it was like real slippery and I wanted to get loaded, but I've never woken up and say, I wish I got high last night. I use my daughter as uh, a... I I use your daughter too. No, sorry. (laughs) As a way of motivating yourself? Yeah, because she's... You know, I've messed up a lot with her and I don't want to do it as she's older. Yeah. So I use that as a motive. Just make sure you do the work. Go to the meeting, get the sponsor. 
Oh, I do. I have my sponsor, and I have. Okay. A, um, I'm working on step two. Bear Let's go to your car right now, Carissa. Okay. What was your problem? Well, I'm seeing this guy that I've known for like three years, and my mom says that if she ever found out that I was seeing him, that um, she would leave, pack her stuff, and leave. And I and I've got wait, wait, Carissa. Huh? If you were seeing him, she would pack up and leave. Mm-hmm. Not throw you out. She would leave. Yeah. Leave you in the house that you live in. Well, the apartment. The apartment that you live in. She would leave, and then she wouldn't pay the rent, and you'd be... Literally, yeah. Let me ask you a question. How old are you? I'm 17. Because you'd seem a lot older. Yeah, I'm good. How old's your boyfriend? He's 23. Okay. He, he, you're 17. He's 23. Well, I'm going to be 18 in two months. Well, then... When did you start uh, dating him? Um, About a month ago. Mar- Carissa, how strong of a program could you possibly be maintaining... If you developed a new relationship in your first month of sobriety. I know. They told me that. That's a total blow it. Total blow it. I can't tell you. I've never seen somebody do this. I shouldn't say never because people will call and say they've done it. But it it is extremely destabilizing. People tend not to take, certainly don't make healthy choices in their relationships early in sobriety. Mm -hmm. And if they do anything, they just take hostages. It's yeah. just that you're, you're, you're feeling adrift at sea and you just grab somebody in the, to bring in the soup with you. It is usually the worst possible situation for developing relationships, and it always destabilizes your recovery. Big mistake. Huge mistake. And already, here you are, rather than focusing on being well, you're focusing on how to deal with your mother who's upset with you and all the ramifications of that. I know. See, that's why I was calling because I wanted to know whether... You know whether I should just tell him. Well, why don't you just? Why don't we just wait for a while? Or, tell him wait or, at least six know. six months. My sobriety is too important to me right now. This is feeling like something which is beginning going to threaten it. I owe it to my daughter. I owe it to myself. I, I've got to be more focused. I can't have a new relationship now. That's it. But also that, and the fact that my mom, you know, that's that's kind of rude to say to me. You know, it, that it's the mother daughter re- relationship look, is over. And it's it's ridiculous. You'll also be eighteen in two months. Yeah. It, it's pretty ridiculous, but right now it doesn't matter. Focus on your sobriety. Okay. R- okay. All right. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Let's go to. Uh, where did I say I wanted to go? Yeah. Hello. Karen. Karen is calling from Orange. Hi, Karen. Hi. You're on Loveline. Hi. I always wanted to be on Loveline. I always wanted to be on Karen. No, oops, sorry. Here you are. You're on the air. Okay. I'm on the air now. Right now. Yes. Oh, okay. With the kinder, gentler Ricky and the same as always, Dr. Drew. Okay. Yes. Hello? Yes. May Hi. I say that we're on needles and pins listening to your story? Yes. Oh, you mean like about the uh, pubic we, hairs? We don't know what your story is about, Karen. You do? Oh, boy. Hmm. Oh. So you, you mean you bought uh, adult toys with pubic hairs on them? Before? Karen, Karen, back up a little bit. Okay. Let's go from the starting, and let's hear your, your story. Okay. Kay. First of all, I want to know why Kevin went kind. Kevin? Kevin? Yes. Oh, I don't know. Well, you see, when you hang around people that want to change you, unless you're into S&M, and you're going to get your ass beat for it, then you should just be yourself. You were cool the way you were. Hmm. Um... Karen? Yes? Do you take any medications? Do I take medications? Mm-hmm. No, I don't. Start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, really. I worked at an adult bookstore, and I might need antibiotics. Okay, well, listen, Karen, okay? Yeah? In in this in the short time that we've spoken with you... Have you ever taken It medicine? seems like you've taken, like, three different questions and kind of just squished them into one. Oh, okay? Really? Yes, so let's hear one question, Okay. Okay. My buttons are being pushed, but I'm kinder, I'm gentler, I'm thinking Marilyn Kagan. Go Maybe ahead. Maybe you need medication. Well, we already know that. What was your question, Karen? Why did you go kinder? Okay, and what was your other question? Um, basically that's it. I had some advice on adult toys. Okay, let's advice. hear, let's hear the adult toys, Karen. Okay. When you're looking for adult toys, always make sure, because I've heard that one tablespoon of bleach mixed with a quart of water will kill the AIDS virus. Now, when we buy adult toys, we know, you know, nobody wants to buy used toys. I, you know what I heard? I heard a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. <laughs> 
Go ahead, Karen. Finish your point. Okay. Point is, um, you want to make sure that you're buying new toys. So when you're looking in these... Uh, you mean people recycle these things? <laughs> well... Wait a minute. Ben mustache hairs. What? Usually when you go, yeah, y- yes, that that would be true, Karen. When you go look for adult toys, types of toys that you use, it's well, always better to buy re- new. They're recycled. No, I don't believe they do have a used place to sell used. But maybe adult people toys. repackage no, them. No, no, no. This is um. Well, I didn't used to work there, but you know, I've worked at several adult bookstores, but this one in particular, I was shopping at one day. Of course. Qu- and what do you usually shop for, Karen? Hmm. What do you usually shop for? No, I you don't go out much, do you? What? Exactly. What do you usually shop for, Karen? Well, it depends on what store I'm at. Well, what what we what was the last thing you bought? Last thing I bought was paint. <laughs> I'm cleaning my daughter's room. It's good that you don't you know get mixed up what you went like went shopping for paint and then all of a sudden you start cleaning your daughter's room with the dildo with the mustache hair on it. No, 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 no. Okay, Karen, was there any other questions that you had? Well, Because I can think of several uh, that Dr. Drew might have. Well, the lady that was talking about the S&M, saying that she sure. was afraid to be around go, her friend. Cause she go with it. Swear. Go with it. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, the lady that didn't understand the one into S&M was weird, because the one that was into S&M, Slave and Master, she knew what she wanted, and therefore she wasn't afraid to reach out and grab it and be happy with it. The one exactly, that was exactly, exactly. The one that was calling and saying, "Well, I'm afraid to be around her." What right. is she afraid of? Afraid that she might get a clue on how to be happy? Exactly, right. Because there's really not, you know, a better way that you can express yourself and get all of your feelings out. You know, like the caller, she was afraid of pain. Pain. She was afraid of taint. Emotion. Oh, paint. She was afraid of paint. Pain. Pain. Right. Hmm. So that's a healthy emotion. If you bury that away and tuck it aside, what other emotions? But where is the hair involved in this story? Oh, well, I just wanted to get online. I thought they'd get me there, but I, truly, I did. See. You're there, Karen. You're there. I did see a hair on a penis. It was a pink one. <laughs> they usually aren't. You know who? You know who this is a call for, Karen? What? This is a call for sightings. Have you ever seen that TV show, Sightings? <laughs> You've probably been a no, guest on it. Yeah, you're have right. It could have been. It yeah. was a UFO. Yeah, it was a UFO. Those yep. are the type of things, the hairs on the penises that you find. But it was and there's real no box. way, and they, they don't have a way right now, I believe, of dusting the hair to see whose hair it was. And it was a greasy penis, you know, supposedly new. Right. Because you don't, you don't want to use the penis when you're shopping for them, do you, Karen? No. But I do want to recommend that people that buy toys from adult bookstores mm-hmm. should disinfect them. Because, you Fair know, advice. Thank you for your call. In the stores do say no returns on any items. But, you know, this one place I go shopping at, I've seen, like, you know, they have the numbers on the tags, like week 33, you know, above the price. They have what do, they, do, do they have expiration dates on them? Well, no, but they have weeks for the stores in the store that I shop at. You Can't know? you just squeeze it like a loaf of bread for the freshness? What? Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, all these Thanks toys just for the call. And then they all came back, and some had pubic hairs, and some had, you know, you never know what. On, yeah, you know? right. They looked used. Right. Thanks, Karen. Why Ricky? That was not a kinder, gentler move. That wasn't me, Drew. Let's just rest for a second, okay? Let's just kind of get into everything she said. Let's go to, this one will be for Drew, so I can sit and be with myself for a little bit. Let's go to Monica from Whittier. Hi, Monica. Hi. Did you learn anything from that last call? Oh, my gosh, she's crazy. Oh, now, now, now. (laughs) What's going on, Monica? Well, I just have a question. I mean, I know, okay, I've been doing Crystal for... Four and a half years. Right. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's not good, I know. But um, How often do you do it? Well, um, since I've gone away to school, I've been gone for two years mm-hmm. to school. And uh, I've been, well, since I got here, I got here like July 7th. And uh, since then, I, from September to July, I was clean. And I came back and 
just just started partying again. Mm -hmm. And I know it's bad, and I know, but I don't know, like, exactly how bad. I mean, how bad is Well, eventually, eventually, uh, and this happens to really everybody that does speed long enough, is you'll get a paranoid psychosis. You'll begin thinking that friends and family and people close to you are sort of plotting against you and talking about you and... Uh, it comes on in very insidious ways, and the, usually the delusions. Are you talking about me when you say that? The delusions that you develop are usually very involved, and you always believe this that they're f- well founded in reality. Irritable mood swings, and these preoccupations will persist for up to six months after oh, you yeah. stop using the speed. Yeah. It can cause heart attacks. You, River Phoenix died of a speed, you know, death basically. I mean, that can happen to you exactly the way he died. It's a common way people die with speed. Um, it can damage your kidneys, it can cause strokes, it can cause heart attacks. Uh, and there is growing evidence that it may actually damage brain itself. I, I really, it's not been my experience that that's actually what it does, but there is some, some evidence that is in fact what happens. <laughs> like your cause. So, but it, it, it is serious drug and it destroys people's lives. It is a very, very serious form of addiction and you will not get over it by just trying to handle it by yourself. You must get some kind of treatment because it will well, all... I, it will always relapse, and what I can predict is you're you're an alcoholic, and you may not have a relationship with alcohol now. But if the speed get, goes away, something else, either pot or alcohol. Oh yeah, there's always something. Yeah, I, mean, I always yeah. have like a backup. Yeah, and that, and you'll always you'll you'll cross over to something else, and uh, that, that those that, that's how cross addiction evolves. Right. Unless you get treatment, that's what's going to happen to you. I think you should very seriously look into this because this is a major major health how problem. How long for you. is the treatment? Because the only reason I'm, I've sat down. Well, Ricky's a recovering speed addict. Why don't you ask him? Huh? How long is the treatment? How long is what treatment? Because how long have I been sober? Right. How long have you been sober? Seven years. Wow. So this treatment so far is about seven, seven years. years. So th- and a day. Yeah, seven years. No, seven years. Today's the day. Today's the day. The thirty wow. first is the day. Good. So Perfect. so basically, my treatment's been about seven years. Yeah. Even though you've not been participating too actively lately. That would be correct. The bad thing here, though, is that. My parents, I have a really good relationship with my parents, and they have no clue. No clue. Well, they found here and there, but... I'm going to go tell them right now. Monica, Monica, then take advantage of the fact that you have their support and to get them involved in your treatment as well and get some help. Why don't, you, why don't you put Monica on hold? Let me talk a little bit off the air, okay? Okay. All right. That's a very nice thing for you to, for, to do, Drew. Well, I'm sure. And maybe with that, I will read. I'll tell you what. You talk to her, and I'll read... Uh, no, I got It's gonna take more. Well, yeah, you have, oh. to to, you have to go to break after you read those. Okay, I'll, I'll read a. Co- Hi, Ricky and Doctor Drew. This is email that I got. Hi, Ricky and Doctor Drew. According to Men's Health, the average length of an erect penis is six point one inches. Beautiful. I mean, three point one inches is average. Over the three is really big, real big. Over three is big one, girls. Uh, dear Ricky, I'm fourteen. My problem is that I don't know what this. Oh, this is definitely a Drew one. I'll read it. At when he gets back in the room. Ricky, first of all, I'd like to say your show rocks, but since you don't have much time, I'll get to the point. Last night I was listening to your show, and I'd like to say Dave was pretty cool, but he's from Walnut. I'm from the one and only Long Beach. I'm 13 years old and have listened to your show for a long time. I also watch you on MT while you were on. I was wondering if it's possible to be on your show just like Dave was. I also want to tell you, not all 13-year-olds jerk off, because I know I don't. Liar. No, he's got like a, a year until he starts jerking off. And like, oh, okay, maybe that. Should I go to a call while Drew is in here? Yes. What? No? Sure. sure. Can we go to break now? I'll tell you what. Let's play a, Let's play that theme song again that that girl sent in. Okay. Okay, for just a second. Okay. No, that, you have it. Oh, you want me to play it? Yeah, let's play it for one second as we wait for Drew because it was wait a minute, wonderful. Oh, wait, okay. What was her name? She's naked in the tape on the tape cover, you know. Not let's tell. listen to it. Bell. Yeah, just because we like it. Okay, wait. Let's listen to it. Slave line, slave time. We talk to you, Drew. Uh-uh. Look to your old man. Look uh-uh. is a reaction, a fascination. Not just an attraction. Mix your life function. We've got a little bit. 106.7. Oh, famous cable. Right. The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-520-1067. The fax number is 213-818 or 310-5201-FAX. Loveline on K-Rock! We'll be right back.
now, back to Loveline on the world famous K Rock. Call Loveline 1 800 520 1067. Here's Ricky Radman and Dr. Drew. Drew, 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 Drew. I'm going to read an email that I wasn't able to read. Remember, we are in the midst of the kindler, gentler Ricky, which so far you, you like it, right, Drew? You're like, loving it. No. You don't? No. You got to talk a lot. I'm just, you know, the parents and everything complaining. And just, you know, I just felt bad when that, so far it's driving when that this out of my girl mind. came up and said, oh, Ricky, you're so mean. And <sighs> Let me read this email. Dear Ricky, I am 14. I need to, do I have any sad music here? Yes. Hold on. Where is it? Because this is a good one. You guys just sit at home and, and wait while I find it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Dear Ricky, I am 14. My problem is that I don't know what the stuff that I am getting in my underwear is. My mom says that it's a discharge, but I don't think so. When I notice it, it's all the way in front of my underwear, not where the vagina is, where it should be. It is clear and it has a small smell. A small smell. Not a big smell. Small smell. And every time that I notice it, it has blue stuff in it. And it can't be from my clothes or anything because I don't wear blue. I haven't got my period yet, but every time that I work out, I get a tiny red spot. What is going on? I am so worried. Help. She's got red spot, clear spot, blue the spots. The red spots are the... It's what? <laughs> the red spots. Anne, Anne walks in here. We're expecting to get a good women's advice. Anne walks in. Sparkles! She, well, she is quite patriotic. She's got red, clear, and blue. The clear is a... No patriotic of her vagina. Let's just stick her up a flag. Ooh. The clear is, would be a normal discharge. And the pro uh, she... It's achieving puberty here. Obviously, this is new to her to have that kind of thing, and that's normal. Blue. The red is her period approaching. Uh, that's going to happen soon. Lucky so all her friends. Let's go right now to Poke. Hello? Lompoc? Lompoc. Isn't that something where you get? Probably. Like, Dr. Drew, what's wrong with my neck? Oh, you have Lompox. I just want to say first, that woman, Karen, is completely insane. <laughs> she really needs some drugs to regulate her, her... Oh, you know, Karen... Well, you're Karen, too. Yeah. Who are we to judge, you know? Yeah, well... I was kind of getting at that. I mean... She was extremely out of it. Look, she really said, I don't think she needed to be on medication. Yeah, she was like, out of it besides the point that she I was like, also kind of but off. The, the kinder, gentler Ricky was also <clears throat> off and spent a lot of time with <clears throat> her. <laughs> What's going on? Fat okay. burger, I tasted it. Well, okay, before I, I tell you my whole story, I want to... Um, Hamburger. I, I kind of want to ask, uh, like, actually everybody there's opinion of, do you think that there's anything really morally wrong with exotic dancing? Seriously. <laughs> morally wrong? No, morally wrong. I think it's good to give girls that can't read a place to make a lot of money. No, uh, no, seriously. I, I there's no, nothing I'm wrong with it. There's seen. nothing. Oops, I think on, to I the extent that it perpetuates an exploitation of women, and the women that tend to do that tend to come from backgrounds of abuse, uh, and it, you know it gives you a venue to sort of feel as though you master that. Bait. History. Well, see, I'm uh, only doing it as you know temporarily. It's only I know I'm sure you've heard people uh, say look, that. Look, and Karen, I'm just saying that just in in so far like as it. if you if you I don't know whether you come from that history or not, but I'm sure if you discuss it with your peers, shake you'll, it. You'll find that most of them shake have now. pretty well, extensive abuse histories. See, you're right about that because most of the girls I've worked with, that's true. Yeah, and that, that's just the way it is. So, so you're you're to the extent, Karen. Yeah. That you're boom, contributing shaka, to boom, Ricky. That you're. Man, <laughs> there's nothing wrong. Dancing's nice, Ricky. That, that if you get, insofar as it, it contributes to the exploitation of women, and it and it further is really the pathology of people who have been abused. Well, I have a problem with it. Whether or not it's a moral issue, I can't really specify it as such. Well, I find I that know, most I strippers. Like, okay, is what I'm doing wrong? I mean, I keep thinking about that. And I'm like, I don't really feel it's like it's not good for you. Feel. It's not good for you. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I didn't have anything happen to me when I was younger, but I was raped like four years ago. Okay. Five years ago, so. <laughs> That's a problem. But anyway, so, okay, this is this is the deal. I was on a show, like, um, a couple weeks ago. I did a show with this girl that I work with. And 
we have two girls shows and we have intertwined shows, which means the two girls. Like, Do you intertwine? Yeah, well, with each other. It's it's. You're intertwining with her. Mm-hmm. It's it's simulated sex basically. Oh, simulated it's what it is. sex. So we did this show, but we both actually Decaf. got into it. But what? We both actually got into it. Yeah. So my question, well, actually, it wasn't really a question. It was. Oh, okay. I remember what I was saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I our, got people out of the, it. Our question was, uh, where do you work? Uh, I'm. I really shouldn't. Uh, Give That's me. true, because business would probably go up a tenfold. No, it's not it. They they kind of would freak out. Well, actually, I would freak out seriously. But um, anyway, so I have kind of got kind of got a thing for this girl now, and her boyfriend works at the company, and he was really jealous when he found out that we actually like did this in the show that it wasn't just simulated. He totally wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna be nice about it. Mm-hmm. This gentleman. Thought it was okay for you girls to go up there and clamp sh- and have simulated love acts with each other mm-hmm. until the act looked more real than he was pissed. No, it wasn't that. It was because he wasn't there and he didn't get to see it. <sighs> Whatever. But see, my big problem is now I'm kind of like interested. She, well, right. And tell her. You know, I mean, okay. Tell her. Well, I think that she kind of has the idea, and so he kind of has the idea also, but. Uh, my concern is, do you think that's kind of like treading on somebody else's... Yes. Um, you think so? How would it not be? Well, because, see, most people don't think of it that way. I normally do. So I when you're know. at work, liquor, but don't like it. Huh? Forget it. It, 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 it is. R- Ricky, concentrate. <laughs> oh, I am. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I no, 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 am. No, 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 no. Concentrate on being kinder, kinder oh. and gentler. Okay? No, seriously, though, because I... I mean, yes. I've never been with a woman before. So oh, I understand, but, but she has a boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you, if you start messing around with her, you're, you're suffer the consequences. I mean, it'd be pretty pretty chaotic. Yeah. And Karen, doing what you're doing is clearly not good for you. Well, I should be ending in the next, like, two weeks. Yeah, so. it's just not good for you. It's yeah. not really get not those, good for get anybody. Get those table but... dances from Karen from Lompoc while you can. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your call, Karen. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was a true test. The stripper and I pretty much kept my composure. No, no, you didn't. You lost completely. I know, no, no, You forgot no. that you were kinder. <sighs> Marilyn Kagan. Let's go to Divina from 15. Divina? From 15. Divina, is that your name? From West Covina. What's no, your name? Divina. Divina. Yeah. Hi, Divina. How's Hi. your summer? Huh? How's your summer? I only ask because I care. Oh, well, it's been okay. I called to tell you that I think you should go back to being your mean self because you're just so much funnier that way. Oh, but it's about feelings now. I mean, I was always, you know, actually I slept quite well knowing that I was a prick because all my life I've always been said, Ricky, you're a jerk. You're You're a prick. And so, you know, for me to be that way on the radio, that was me. But, you know, I'm just kinder and gentler now, going through pre-midlife crisis. And you invented a new word called kindler. Kindler. Kindlier. Kindlier. And would they say kindler? Kindlier or Kindlier. Kindlier. Kindler. See the old Rick, the old Ricky would say, would snap at you for correcting me, Drew. <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you. I just for it, go back thank to you for helping self. me with my language, Drew. My linguistics. Soon I'll be in the street trying to score because I'll be hooked on phonics. <laughs> Ricky, yes. I hope you go back to your old self tomorrow because the show just isn't the same. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye. Let's go to Chloe, seventeen from Laguna. Chloe. <laughs> Chloe. Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. How are you? I'm good. Just kind of hanging out. And? Yeah, me too. What's going on? Okay. Remember, don't get any with the hairs on them. <laughs> no, we wouldn't go there. We don't go there. No. <laughs> well, I'm 17, and I'm, like, enrolled in a summer school class. <laughs> kind of getting into my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I apologize for that one. <laughs> I did that. I've been eating as much as I can today, just for the heck of it. Nice. Celebrate your sober birthday. I'm sorry. And you're held again. I'm 17. Has this ever happened to you before? Well, see, I always, I've dated only guys that are older than me. You know, I've never really gone out with guys that are my age. Right. So, in a way, it's really not different. Just the fact that he's a teacher. Hey, have you heard that police that song by the police? Which one? You know that one? I don't know. That talks about it. I don't know which one. About the teacher. (laughs) 
It's called the Canary and a Cola. Really? Canary and a Cola. cola. No. Coal mine. Sorry. Oh, I thought it was. I always wonder why they said. I thought it was Canary and a Cola. <laughs> But see, he's not really a teacher. He's more of a coach. Oh, yeah. Coaches well, look, are all it, perverts. It, well, it's not appropriate for you to have a relationship with him. Scott. It's okay to fantasize. Normal kind of thing to have happen mm-hmm. between somebody your age and, and uh, their teachers. Uh, presumably, the teacher will be professional and maintain the appropriate posture and not, you know, he would not dream of getting involved. So these are re- purely fantasies, okay? Oh, dream. Oh, so that, that his whole career would be would be ruined <laughs> if he were to pursue this. But okay. The, what if I told you that I noticed that he looks at me? Well, you may be feeling that and may, maybe there he is responding in some way, but it, it is fan, a fantasy Wait. and it's okay to have that, but it's not something that should be pursued, okay? And it's it's oh, it's normal for you to have those types of fantasies. That's correct. But you don't act on those types of fantasies, okay? You keep them to yourself. Eventually, it will wear off, and you will be glad. You think? Oh, yeah. I know. Okay. Because okay. I had a crush on my football coach. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anybody that knows me know I never played any sports. Uh, do we have time for another call? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Let's go to... Uh, you know what's yes. annoying, Scott? During the break... He like he like goes out there and just starts abusing everybody. Every third word is an expletive. He like he has to explode <laughs> when he gets out. There. I'm like you freaking. Oh, oh, did I just say that no, on almost. the air? I said oh, frack no, it, no, frick it. N- well, <laughs> let me repeat what I said. Now the last ten minutes have been keep my beat. Maryland music on. <laughs> yeah, Maryland Maryland Keegan. Keegan. Well, that he Maryland that he go, but he goes out there and says that every third word to to compensate for the pressure of being so kind and gentle. I like it. I feel really good. Let's go to Josh who is calling from Downey, where I always go to that neighborhood to make my clothes so soft. Hello? Hi, Josh. Yeah, I, I, this is for you, Ricky. Go, Josh. Right now, I think you suck, Ricky. I mean, it was better when you were mean. That's okay that you feel that way, Josh. I'm glad that you could vent your frustration with me. I mean, but... You're having trouble He's expressing causing, to Ricky you know just what, how John? much he sucks. <laughs> Is that right? Josh, I know that feeling that you felt. Because I felt that for the past year and 11 months. Of but you know, Ricky, I mean, all my friends right now, like, listening to the show, thinking that you were all cool. And, like, I mean, you had... <laughs> you had integrity, Ricky. One time you had Josh integrity. Josh, Josh, you know what? You need a harp like I have. Listen to this. Just listen, Josh. It's okay. It's okay. Man, it's like man. that thing that that thing they did all those people do on the beach, tight cheeks. Tai Chi. No, I'm parents, doing tight cheeks right now. All and those I'm, parents are called up thinking that you were uh, this mean guy. Right. They need to get laid, personally. But you, I mean, you should go back to your smart out okay, way. Maybe it's I'm the one that needs to get <laughs> What? <laughs> okay, Josh. Thank you for your call. All right. Buddy. Bye. He seemed very adamant about the way he was feeling. Do we have commercials right now? Mm-hmm. Should we go to another call right now? Go to like four, is it? No, let's go to line six. Brandy, 17 from Westwood. Brandy. Yeah. What's up? Nothing. You're on the air. I am? Yes. Okay, well, I kind of have this problem. Okay. Um, well, I went over to my boyfriend's house uh, like a week ago, and um, it was right after work, and he didn't know that I was coming, but it's not a big deal. And so I saw his friend's car parked out in the front, so I thought they were just hanging out. So um, I just went into his house and wasn't downstairs, and I thought that he'd just be in his room because he watches TV or listens to music or something. So I went up there, you know, thinking him and his friend were going to be hanging out or whatever, and I went up there, and I walked in, and they were sitting on the bed kissing. That dude's a fag. (laughs) Well, and I don't know how to confront him because... What happened was I looked at him and, like, my mouth dropped, and I and I ran out, I ran downstairs and just left, and he was calling after me. And, I mean, I need to know how to confront him because I haven't talked to him for, like, a week. Anyway, um, but he comes to my house, and (laughs) he comes to my house, and my parents tell him that, uh, that I'm not here, and 
he comes to my work and like I have to go in the back of my manager <laughs> and my manager tells him that I can't come or whatever because that's like against policy but I don't know what to say to him I, I mean I didn't know that he was a fag <laughs> So, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm totally, I was speechless and I still am. And I, I like need some help on what I should say to him. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. He's a fag. <laughs> <laughs> I, what do I, what do I say to him? No, no harps. Harps. No harps. Harps, harps, harps. You know what you have to say to him? What? Basically, he was cheating on you. How <laughs> yeah, would you have felt? How would you have felt if he was kissing a girl? Um, probably really ticked off. You should feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, but it's a way different feeling. Totally. It's like a gay. That's bashing what he said. Feeling. It's a gay bashing. Yeah. Well, then you've got some own problems to work out. <laughs> but your boyfriend obviously, you know, likes guys. Yeah, but I, I, we've been going out for like a year, so it's. Well, like, look at it as a year. Your boyfriend cheated on you. Okay? Yeah. So it's done. Yeah. The, the relationship is done? Yeah, but what if he was just curious? If mm. he was curious, he's still cheating on you. Yeah, but I I kind of have a feeling that if he was curious and wanted to see if he liked guys or whatever, and maybe it didn't work out and maybe they didn't like it, then we could go back to normal. Um, I think you're being a little naive. Hmm. I mean, if he's curious and, and acting out... On impulses, that's fine, but he's doing it while he's still in a committed relationship, and that's not fine. And we thank you for your call. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was mean, Scott. We'll be back with more love. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm the one that has to play something. You know, we'll, this we'll new Ricky back. thing is just, I, I can barely tolerate it even more. Ricky, now. the troublemaker. <laughs> Dr. Drew, the nice one. Yeah. Love line. We'll be right back on the world famous K Rock. Hey, I like Ricky. Shut up. Wait a minute. Dr. Dr. Drew's nice. Ricky's cool. Ricky's cool. Uh, If there's something bugging you, call Ricky and Dr. Drew on K-R-O-Q, Love Line, Love Line. If you need some good advice, call the guys, they're really nice, it's K-R-O-Q, Love Line, Love Line. Hard to believe that a listener sent that in. It's great. We're going to give the address at the end of the show if you want to send in yours, and uh, and we'll give the address, or maybe we'll even let Scott give the address. Right now, let's go to... No. Let's go to Debbie, 21 from Anaheim. Hold on. Got to get back in my place. Okay, I'm feeling good. Hello. Feeling good. Hi, Debbie. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? How's the show going tonight? Good it's show, huh? Good. It's going really good. Yeah, thanks. You great, Ricky. Why are you letting these people yell at you for being nice? I don't know. See? It's that nice guy thing, you know? Oh, nice guys are good. Okay. Don't trip on these people. They don't what, know what they're what's going on? Okay, Debbie. <laughs> of course, you live in Anaheim, the happiest place on earth. <laughs> of course. Um, I wanted to make a comment to the girl that was just on Debbie. That it was cool that I mean, I know she was shocked that she found her boyfriend with another guy, but I thought that it. I have a friend that is bisexual and a friend that's straight, and we've been friends since high school. And we have the best relationship, and I think if she can be open-minded about it, it'd be the best thing for her. Okay. That's nice, Debbie. That's nice? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your advice for her, her call. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Sue, who is 29 and calling from Newhall. Hi, Sue. Hi. Um, You're on Loveline. How are you tonight? Pretty good. Good. Um, and actually, I just, I wanted to, I know you weren't wanting to take any more calls dealing with this, but um, the, the whole sellout issue when, uh, you know, these teenagers are like calling in and saying, oh, you know, she's a sellout because... Because um, she's Mexican she, and yeah, she's listening to... Uh, oh, listening to her own culture and, and that kind of crap. And, and I just want to say, I just... I'm really disappointed in you, Ricky, because I think you're like the biggest sellout of them all. Oh, Which why, would, nice, you that? why well, would you say that? Why would you say that, Sue? You're totally like compromising your integrity solely based on you know other people's criticism. By being nice? Uh, no, of you being of you being 
yourself. So I shouldn't be nice anymore? Well, no, I mean, if you want to be nice Hold on, in stop your it. heart, then you should do it. But right. Don't, don't You're right. do it just because people are calling in saying, oh, I can't handle this. So that makes me the biggest sellout. Well, yeah. Because I was being nice for the whole show. Well, yeah. So some dumb broad from Newhawk calls me, says I'm a sellout because I'm being nice. Yeah. So you have the audacity. Who the hell are you to say that I be that I was being nice makes me a sellout? What the hell do you do for a living? What do I do for? Yeah. What do you do for a living? I'm a student. Exactly. Does that pay good? You're 29. You're still a Scott, student. Scott, you bring the harps on, please. You're 29. Harps. And you're now forget that no, now stupid I want harp. The harps. Now you're 29. I want you're still a student. What kind of yeah. how good is that? But ah, forget the harps. No, she's right. She's right. I'm a grad student. Yeah. She's right. She's right. 29. Shouldn't you been a grad student like 10 years ago? How's this? Much better? Better? Yeah, am I yeah, am I not I'm a sellout anymore? Back. I'm glad to have you back. Okay, I'm glad to be back. Bye. Bye. It's about 12 o'clock, probably time for her to go have about three more boxes of brownies. Let's go to Benny, 19, from Bloomington, who's on line three. Stupid bitch. Benny. Yeah. This is what what's we were getting up? outside there. Oh, you didn't right. hear all this. Benny, what's up? All right, man. I have a problem. Good. Right. Go see a doctor. I'm done with you. Let's go to Mark from Chino Hills on line two. What's up, Mark? Mark, yeah. what's your problem? Oh, okay. See, my mom, uh, she's always grabbing my friends in the crotch. Yeah, right. That's a lie. That's a made-up story. The number's 1-800-520-1067. You want to fax as you can at 5201-FAX. Uh, should we just go to a call blind? Let's just go to a call blind. K-Rock, you're on the air. Blind. What's your name? I'm Lindsay. Where are you calling from, Lindsay? I'm calling from Paul Freeze. Oh, so you're rich. <sighs> what's going on? Um... Thank you. You've got a great, great gift of gab there, Lindsay. Yeah. What's going on? Hello? Hi, you're on the air. This isn't Lindsay anymore. No. Who's this? Oh, this is PJ, the caller that... Um... Oh, my God, it's PJ from last night. E- Hello? I wasn't here last night. I know, but you can hear PJ's thing. Why? What did PJ have to PJ talk was about? the one sure that, whose friends, were, yeah. whose friends yeah. were accusing yeah, her of selling I'm out. I'm 16 from Cerrito. She's the one that prompted Kelly's call tonight. Yeah, um... Which was terrible. Yeah, I just want to say thanks to you guys because you guys are really like supporting me in a lot of ways, you know. Well, we'll keep doing it, okay? All right. Thanks for calling back, PJ. Uh, Good uh, luck. Uh, I, just I, go blind. I just, I just, just go ran blind. a screen, like avoid, you know, getting in front of Ricky on that one. <coughs> go ahead. Oh, piece right. of potato. Look. Yesterday, I was skating. I. Was- I Where are we skating? Skateboarding or rollerblading? Uh, skateboarding. Skateboarding. Okay, well, good. Nice. If you were rollerblading, I would have hung up on you you're right nice now. You're nice to skateboard. Yes, I am. Good. I don't skate very. Yeah, those little wheels now. What's going on? We hit them. Okay. I was skating yesterday, and I was like trying to do a rail slide, and I fucked up, and I. Hold on, hold on. You, you gotta delete them. Oh, sh- you did a rail slide. You slid down. Would you slide? Did you do it on stairs, or did you just do it on a curb? Um, this is a call for Drew. I take it, right? Okay, I was doing it on a pole. Right, on a pole down like the stairs? Yeah. Right. And I slipped and landed on my crotch. That would happen. You should know that's the danger of doing rail slides. And I really hurt myself, dude. You should, you know what? Do you, rail slides, I've, se- I've seen videotapes of people hitting their nuts so hard. You got. You should go see a doctor. What's wrong? Your balls hurt? Yeah, like but one of them. It's like they're getting really swollen. Yeah, yeah you go gotta see a doctor. Somebody. Gotta yeah. see somebody. Gotta okay. be careful with those rail slides. Yeah, I know. Definitely bad on the balls. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right now let's go to line one. This is Colista. Colista's not real. Oh, okay. Let's just go to another call. Just go blind. You happier now? You all happier now? There, I was nice. I lasted an hour and fifty minutes. Okay, an hour and fifty minutes. I truly feel sick. Who's on the line? I'm gonna either throw up or burp again. I think I'm gonna throw up. I'm going to throw up. You and Fletcher. Exactly. Who's, who's on the line? Hello. You're on, you're on the air. Hello? Yep, you're on the air. Hi, um, I have a problem. Um, my best friend, I, I, me and my best friend like the same guy, and um, my friend's away, and he just asked me out. Go out with him. Huh? Go out with him. Well, I don't want my best friend to get mad at me. But is she going out with him? Huh, no, but she likes him a lot. And you like him a lot. Well, she likes him more than I do. But neither of you have gone out with him. Do you but, like... Oh, but, she but likes him more, though? Yeah, it's nice that she... Does would... he want to go out with her? Huh? No, he doesn't okay. like her. But, it, but, it's, but if you really don't uh, like the guy, you're, you're right. It might be worthwhile hanging back and, and uh, protecting your friendship because it could really throw some heavy feelings into the into the soup here. Okay? And there's nothing I hate in my soup more than feelings. Heavy feelings. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So chunky, you can eat those heavy feelings with a fork. Next call. Just go blind. Just hit any line you want, Scott. I don't care. We'll rifle through them. Hi, you're on Loveline. Hi, can I welcome Ricky back? Can you what? Yes, you may welcome me back. I can? Yes. Really? Yes. 
I don't think you're Ricky, though. <laughs> well, that just goes to prove how moronic you are. Let's go to another call. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Yep. Hello. Hey, Rick, uh, Dr. Drew? Yeah. Hey, look, yeah. Hey, I got look, a question, man. Look, yeah. Look. Okay, you know the drug Accutane? Yeah. Okay, what are some of the side effects of that? Is it on your back? It's, it's liver toxic. It can make your skin very dry. It, people that take it, you know, will get dryness in the mouth, and the corners of their mouth will crack, and their eyes get dry, and they can get corneal irritations. Okay, now would it make you tired? Sure. <laughs> well, you, but you got to get liver tests immediately if you're getting something like that, because it can be very toxic to your liver. Okay. Uh, it has lots of side effects, loaded with side effects. Pregnant women of childbearing age should not take it because it causes terrible birth defects. Are you of childbearing age? Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. He's mm -hmm. not a woman. I was... See your dermatologist that's prescribing it, okay? Let's go to, uh, just go blind, Scott. K-Rock, who's this? What? Turn your radio down. Okay. You're on the air. Hello. Go Hi. ahead. Hello? Hi. Hi, this is Stacy. Uh, Stacy, go ahead. Okay, um, I just wanted to, like, talk, ask, I want to say something about that, that girl that called in about the, um, <laughs> the, <what>? <laughs> Go ahead, you're on the air. Yeah, is this Ricky? Yeah. I was wondering, uh... Smoking a pot through a water bong, how much does that reduce the carcinogen? Smoking pot through water bong? Yeah. To my oh, no sorry, wait, you're wait, not wait, allowed wait. to use the word bong on wait, the radio. Wait, 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 now wait, wait, we have to take it away wait. from you. Say water, tobacco, water, water, smoking pipe. instrument. Uh, to, to my knowledge, marijuana has no carcinogenic potential. Oh, okay, a water smoking instrument. What? Look, to my knowledge, marijuana does not cause cancer at all. So smoke away, Johnny. But you, do you, wait, wait, wait. You understand? At all? There's That's no in marijuana smoke. Not that I'm, not that we've been able to prove. Really? That plenty of other damaging things that happen from marijuana, but so, cancer is not one. So of them. tomorrow we'll get a call. Tomorrow we'll get a call to. Tomorrow we'll get a call to. Hi, Drew. Remember last night when you said smoking pot cures cancer? Yeah, exactly. Hey, Norma. Yeah. You're on Loveline. Yeah, I just want to smoke him back. Me and my boyfriend Jason just like you as a prick that you are. <laughs> really? Yeah. So the nice guy didn't cut it. No, I, I didn't walked cut out. It. Listen, I, I, I did it for an hour and 45 minutes. Yep, I was listening, and it wasn't the same. Wasn't I like... walked out there, and Ann said, Ricky, this is really nice. I like this. Ann really liked it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Ann is an no, older woman, and the no, older Ann women that listen to this show, oh, no, probably she, she is. the older women that, that <laughs> listen to this show, like that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I want you to like you the way you are. Be the prick that you are. Thank you, Norma. And as a true prick, as a true prick, I will now hang up on you. Let's go blind. Do we have more time? Yep. Of course we do. K Rock, you're on the air. Hi, um, I was learning about speed. If it Hi What? Go ahead. Yeah, if um the if the side like I just wanna know the side effects and everything. Well tape your conversation and listen to it when you're not on it. What? Exactly. We we discussed it earlier. At length. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. How are you? What? Good. I can't read you. Yeah, yeah. Good, you're on the air. Listen, let's, let's talk about tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, uh, Mr. Bertram from The Morning Show. From, Have you heard him on The Morning Show? I've heard his own show on set. I don't, I don't think I'm supposed to admit that I listen to The Morning Show, am I? What? Kenneth might, and Brad? Might you get mad at me if I if I say that I listen no, to No, I've him? actually heard The Morning Show before, too. He's very funny. I heard in his show last week. Mr. Bertram is really funny. I honestly rushed back to my car to hear more of his... his uh, Breaks. I do that when our show's on sometimes. Well, I might too. As soon as our show's over, I rush to But my it'd be car. nice to have, we're going to have him on tomorrow night. He's going to be visiting. And then he's going to, does he have to go back on the morning show the next day? Yes. Maybe we'll call Kevin Bean tomorrow morning and wake him up tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. Like at 10 to 12. Wake him up. Because they don't listen to Love Line. Let's go to. Uh, That's it, isn't it? Let's go to No. We have No the bus driver. Remember No the bus oh, driver? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. What Is line? this No? What Six. Line? Six. 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 No. Hey, Ricky. No. Hey, how's it going, guy? How does it go, no? How was your trip? My trip was good. Uh, how's been uh, your trips today? Oh, uh, I didn't work today. Oh, that's good. Hey, I got Do you guys have air conditioning in your buses? Yeah. That's a good thing, though. You know what? Everybody says they're too cold. Yes, that's what I say on every time I take the bus. What's going on? Hey, uh, hey Dr. Drew. Yeah. Uh, I got a question for you. My wife says that you can't get pregnant if you're breastfeeding. Uh, th that is a... It's a myth? No, 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 no. Well, usually they remove it, the baby before you, having you do sex. Not, women are not as likely to ovulate when they're breastfeeding. Uh, the, the, indeed, it is a form of birth control. It's just not a very effective birth control. It, it, but you can get pregnant. It does happen. It's not certainly as, as good a contraceptive as, say, using the birth control pill. I don't have a statistic off the top of my head. 20%. But it, but it does tend to prevent pregnancy. It does? Tend to. No, but you, not. Not absolutely. Yeah. Did Ricky know that? <laughs> 
Yeah, no. Matter of fact, I'm not breastfeeding right now. Okay? <laughs> Thanks a lot, right, no. Take it easy, guy. Hey, Bye. we're going to go to some commercials right now, and uh, then we'll come back, and Anilo will give you the address, and we'll talk. You know what really chaps my ass? Got a problem? Call 1-800-520-1067. Ever patient and loving. Loveline will be right back on K-Rock. Now, back to Loveline on the world-famous K-Rock. Here's Ricky Rackman and Dr. Drew. Oh, keep going. Well, thanks, everybody, for being a part of tonight's show. I lasted for what? A minute and 45 minutes. An hour and 45 An minutes. An hour and 45 A minute and 45 minutes. Well, man, what is That'd that? That'd be 46 minutes. It's a trail mix. My stomach hurts. Uh-huh. That's a nut log. He's going to be a very regular DJ tonight. So, uh, so I'm back. I feel better now. I so, feel so Drew, you got an hour. You got an hour and forty-five minutes to give people all the advice. You've always, let's go to one last call, yeah, real quick. Passive aggressiveness is worse. Just than line four. Honesty. Adam, twenty-one from Sherman Oaks. Adam, you're on Love Line. Hey, it's Andy, not Adam. Okay, hi, Adam. Hey, I know how much you love hanging up on people. Yes. And how much you enjoy it now that you're back to yourself. Yes. Hang up on me and enjoy it, man. No. <laughs> so Boogerman is coming up next. Boogerman, will you give your review on Waterworld? Sucked. Oh man, I want to see it, but you thought Species sucked too, and Species ruled. No, okay. Did you see Die Hard Three? No. Oh, I walked out of that no. movie. Hey, Anne, if you want to, if you want to send us your Loveline theme song, I thought Boogerman was gonna do one. What? Loveline no, theme we song. Have no one else. Songs all over the radio. Oh, well, if you want to send us. Hey. Fine. Why isn't none of the cards working? If you want to send in your Loveline theme song, Anilo will give you the address. Turn her yeah, mic on, Bonehead! Jesus. God, he doesn't have the card on. I say, put the card on. I'm sitting here pushing buttons for an hour and 50 minutes. It doesn't work. Turn her mic on. Is it on? Yeah. Thank you. P.O. Box 10670, Burbank, California, 91510. One more time. P.O. Box 10670, Burbank, California, 91510. And please send us your... Not and. And. Duh. Please send us your Loveline theme songs. We will play them tomorrow. Mr. Bertram's going to be joining us on Loveline. Yeah, anything else we can do to plug some more people that are on the friggin' morning show. We will be here. But well, he's actually got his own show, too, doesn't he? And he's actually very funny. Yeah, people like him. People like him. Boogerman is coming up next. He'll be with you till 5.30. Thank you for listening and joining us on Loveline. You're listening to 106.7 Carol QFM, Pasadena, Los Angeles, the world-famous K-Rock. I love you, Scott. Here, I have some trail mix. Thank you. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs>